All right, guys, we have some news around the Dallas Mavericks. I have my day off today because we're in for tomorrow for the start of free agency, but wanted to bring you this. Mark Stein reports that league expectation is that Andre Drummond will sign with the Mavericks early on in NBA free agency. Now, he does have a player option for about $3.3 million with the Chicago Bulls. Earlier in free agency, or earlier in the offseason, it was thought that he would opt into that, but... Now the expectation is that he is going to opt out and sign with the Dallas Mavericks. Obviously, uh, this team has been looking to revamp this center position. They drafted Derek Lively the second. Uh, they acquired Rashawn Holmes in a trade. They tried to trade for DeAndre Ayton. I still think that could be on the table uh, in a future move, but uh, they're going to add another piece here in Andre Drummond to join Lively uh, and Holmes uh, as this three-headed center rotation for now. Obviously, if they were to trade for Ayton uh, or a Capella or someone like that, uh, I think Holmes would almost certainly be in that deal, and potentially JaVale McGee, because that's the second part of this, right? What does this mean for JaVale McGee? Well, Stein reports, assuming this deal does go down, uh, Drummond to Dallas, that uh, McGee is not in their plans. Obviously, Christian Wood's not in their plans either. They're going to let him go. Uh, JaVale McGee is not uh, in the Mavericks' plans either. Uh, so it sounds like it'll be this trio of Holmes, Lively, and Drummond or they'll upgrade at starting center and get like an Aiton and then move Holmes, presumably, in that deal uh, if that were to happen. If that's what ends up going down, even if it's just this three-headed uh, trio, I think it's still a clear upgrade at the center position. I think Dallas would like to upgrade at starter because I think there's some question marks around Rashawn Holmes after being played out of the Kings rotation last year. I think there are some questions uh, around uh, how much Derek Lively can contribute as a rookie, but uh, I think either way, you're sitting in a better position from a rebounding standpoint, defensive standpoint, uh, than you were a year ago, and that is good. For what Drummond brings to the table, excellent rebounder. He can score around the basket. Not a great defender. Not bad. Not great, though. Not really a rim protector. He's never been that. But if he's your second, third center, uh, I think that's okay. I, I, he's definitely better than JaVale McGee. There, there's simply no doubt about that. So uh, I think that uh, adding Drummond is perfectly fine. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, and let me explore this too. I think it's going to be on the biannual uh, contract, which is like $4.4 million, uh, 4.5. Uh, I would be shocked if this was part of the mid-level exception. If it's the vet minimum, even better. But if I had to guess, I think this will be for the biannual because if he's going to opt out of 3.3, 3.4 million, I don't think he's going to take the vet minimum to sign with Dallas. I think it will be for the biannual. So he'll get a slight pay raise and uh, get to play with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, a player he's played with in the past. All right, let me know. If you like the idea of signing Andre Drummond, type L for like. If you dislike it, if you're not a fan of it, type D for dislike. Again, I like it enough for the biannual. I don't love it, but uh, I think he's better than JaVale McGee, so I, I do appreciate that Dallas has been proactive in trying to uh, improve this position, so I'm going to type my L for like. Now, coming up next here on the show, we recorded a video last night uh, that was set to go out here shortly. Lots of rumors, buzz, latest on Kyrie Irving, Pascal Siakam as well, so stay tuned for that as we explore the latest Dallas Mavericks news and rumors. Dallas Mavericks rumors continue to heat up as free agency is vastly approaching. Harrison Graham here with another episode of Mavericks Today by Chat Sports. Let's kick things off with Pascal Siakam. There's a report out there that the Mavs have called the Raptors about a potential Siakam trade. We'll bring in Jeff Cooperstein, producer Coop, here on the show today. And Coop, interesting development here. A player in Siakam who was central to winning a championship back in 2019. A guy who brings you some good offensive flair and can defend multiple positions as well. What are your initial thoughts on this report? Yeah, I love Siakam. I think he's one of the more underrated players in the NBA. I think he fits the Mavericks and what they're trying to do perfectly. He'd be someone, if I were the Mavs and he's available, I'd be all over. Yeah, and you look at his numbers here. One thing I don't love is that he's never really become a knockdown three-point shooter, but 
If he honestly gave you what he did two seasons ago, 34.4%, I'd be fine with that. It's below average, but it's good enough that you can't just leave him completely wide open. He's got a good midi game. He can score around the rim, uh, and he's a good rebounder, too, uh, for his size. And that's an area, Coop, that I think the Mavs have really emphasized here this offseason. Now, I do want to mention this, Coop. Um, there was a report a few days ago that any team reaching out to Toronto for Siakam um, would not get guarantee from yeah. Siakam uh, to agree to a contract extension. He reportedly really likes it in Toronto, so doesn't mean you couldn't keep him long term, but he would not commit to an extension. So if I'm the Mavericks, unless he changes his mind on that and is willing to sign for three or four years beyond this year, it's got to lower the trade value because if you're going to potentially lose him a year from now, I don't think you can commit to that if you're Dallas. Yeah, I would think so as well. I mean, it's a risk that you would have to be willing to take. It's obviously a calculated kind of thing where you look at you look at the possibility of him signing an extension. I believe he has two years left on his deal. So that's something that you would definitely have to look at. Look, I love the player. I think it would be great. Now, are you are you signing him to a five-year max deal? Like, what kind of contract is, is, is it looking like that he would get? Yeah, that, I mean, that's another part of it as well. I just personally, if I'm going to trade for him, I would much rather have the security of him being here five or six years, uh, potentially, Absolutely. than just a like, year or two. I think if you're trading for him, you would love to have an extension in place. But if, if that's not the case, then maybe the asking price comes down a little bit. I mean... That's but, something that you would also have to factor And there in. are advantages to that. I mean, maybe you kind of gamble and say, okay, we'll pay less for the player now, but we still think we can convince him to stay here long term. Uh, so there is that side of it as well. Now, as far as a potential trade package, I mean, I think any of these trades that the Mavs have been connected to, Coop, I think Tim Hardaway has to be involved with his salary filler, $17, $18 million. I think for Siakam, let's just go the route of they're not – uh, going to, um, he's not going to commit to an extension. I think it's probably something like Hardaway, Josh Green, and pick and or picks. I know this is what you cooked up here, Hardaway, Kleba, and McGee in a 2027 first. Look, I would love to do that and not give up Josh Green. In this scenario, too, you could re-sign Dwight Powell to help fill some of those minutes you would lose from Kleba and potentially McGee there. He could be your third center uh, on this roster. And Siakam can play the four for you. I mean, you could go one through five, Kyrie, Luka, uh, Josh Green, Siakam, and then uh, Rashawn Holmes. And then your bench unit could be, you know, Jaden Hardy, uh, Reggie, Reggie Bullock, Lively, and Dwight Powell. And then maybe you add a couple of vet men guys. I, I don't hate that at all. And look, yeah, this is the trade idea I cooked up, but I would assume the Raptors would ask for Green or Hardy. This is kind of what I would give them. I mean, you, look, the, we know the Mavs are trying to get off that JaVale McGee contract. So I basically think in any other trade that the Mavericks make this offseason, I think it will involve JaVale McGee. So that's kind of why I threw him in there. And this, the money works with this trade as well. So I would I, do this trade in a heartbeat. Yeah, oh, without without a doubt. Even not, without extension guarantee. I'm not sure the Raptors would, but it's it's something that if I was Nico Harrison, I would be running to the league office to try to get, get that me. through. Yeah, no doubt about it. Would you trade for Pascal Siakam? Let us know in the comments. Type T for trade or P for pass. Uh, listen, if you can get him on board, uh, I would be absolutely thrilled uh, with Pascal Siakam in Dallas. Type T for trade or you can type P for pass. Now, our NBA free agency coverage live gets going on Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 Central time. What will the Mavericks do? What will all teams do? Join us on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV, And be sure you're subscribed here as well, youtube.com slash TV. Every single Mavericks move, trade, rumor that's out there, we're going to break it down here on this show uh, like we have been leading up to free agency, but especially once free agency starts. We will have you guys covered to so subscribe and do not miss out on any of it. Okay, let's uh, oh boy. talk one more time here about a uh, story that's been out there. The latest Kyrie Irving rumors, because just when you think it's, oh, he's a lock to come back, uh, ESPN throws a wrench into things. Here's Ramona Shelburne, and then Coop and I will react. Uh, she says, this was just hours after the Woj report on Wednesday, by the way, uh, that it's very likely he'll resign. Shelburne said he intends to take meetings when free agency opens. There are widely held expectations that he returns to Dallas, so that's good. But what that contract looks like and what happens with these meetings he intends to take when free agency opens, it's going to be interesting. Now, what does Kyrie Irving want? From what I'm told, she continues, 
He wants to find a place where he can spend the rest of his career in a place that he feels like home. That part is interesting to me, Coop, because it's like, does he view Dallas as that? I kind of I don't think, know. I kind of think he does, and I kind of think that's why all the rumors are out that he's basically a done deal that he's returning to Dallas. I think he loved his time here. I think he likes the relationship with J- Jason Kidd and Nico Harrison. So I think that bodes well for the Mavericks. I also kind of think, and I'm not going to go big tinfoil hat guy here, but I kind of think this is ESPN trying to, you know, drive up a little controversy because Woj said he's done. Well, he's the biggest free agent on the market, so yeah. they need to do something there. Yeah, keep uh, keep free agency interesting. Yeah, I mean, look, I said on Wednesday my confidence meter is 92. percent You said 97. Have you backed off 97 a little? Or you Maybe back- I go down to 92. Okay, I'll stick it. I'll stick at 92. I. I I go back to Woj's report. Number one, look, I think Shelburne has reputable sources, but Woj is the most tapped-in insider in the game, him or Sham, so I'm going to lean on that report more. And two, he also just made a good point. Like, what other teams are there? Like, the teams that can afford to pay him aren't contenders. Like, does he want to play for the Rockets? Uh, Okay, like... (laughs) Go ahead, man. You go win 31 games a year for the next three years. Uh, Indiana, they're not contending. Detroit... They're not ready yet. Like, it, look, if he like falls in love with the idea of playing with LeBron, well, they don't have money. So then it has to be a sign and trade, and the Mavs have to agree to that. So I just, uh, you know, his options aren't that vast, especially for the type of contract he's looking for. Yeah, his options are very limited, and that's another reason why I think he'll end up back in Dallas. But I can tell you this, Harry, if he does not end up back with the Mavericks. You may never recover. I may never financially recover from this. Financially. And this show, <laughs> the show of Kyrie Irving leaving will just be me looking like this the whole time. Oh, man. We don't need that. We don't need it. Kyrie, you're still a Mav. As Kyrie's far as we a know. Mav, we hope. We've been down this road before. All right. Uh, that's it. Sorry to end on a uh, slightly, oh, no, note, but uh, he's going to be a Mav. It's going to be all right. Coop, Harrison, we're out. More to come as we get closer to free agency. 